the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's prophetic. We as Christians will dwell in God's kingdom forever and forever and forever. This first part of the verse in Hebrews 13 uh, that I've read here, 5 in 5c, verse 6. The, this part of the verse is a very familiar scripture that most Christians and even non-Christians can quote. But with every biblical promise given to the child of God, it is exactly that. It is for those whose faith is in Jesus Christ alone, the child of God. You see, outside of a relationship of Jesus Christ, we can't have the sense of security and assurance that we, the presence of God is abiding in us because we do not have the Spirit of God. And in Romans 8, it tells us, if you do not have the Spirit of God, you do not belong to Christ. A child of God has the Holy Spirit dwelling in them. In them. We are to encourage the unbeliever, the sinner, to come to Jesus, come to the harbor of safety and rest, and trust Him with your soul first. Then, then is the promise to them, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Once you are Christ, once you belong to Him, there isn't anything that can separate you from His love. <clears throat> what a wonderful and comforting word from the Lord. And every child of God can embrace this truth. We are not forsaken. God has not left us alone to fend for ourselves. He would not do that. He knows our weaknesses and He is touched by our human weakness and frailty because He, being God, took on flesh and became man. Jesus understands all of us. He understands humanity. He understands the trials of the Christian. The first time we see these words, I will never leave you nor forsake you, is in Deuteronomy 31. Chapter 31. So we have here God's promise is seen throughout the scriptures that he is with his people, that he's going with his people. So I, I read again here in 13, 5c and 6, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Hmm. I think today that this is a good place to leave off with that thought. As a child of God, we don't fear, we shouldn't fear. We should not fear life, we should not fear death. It needs to be balanced in our life as we trust in Jesus. No matter what's going on in our world, no matter what's going on in your life, you can trust God. God will see you through. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for your truth. I pray that your word will go forth and just feed and touch the hearts of those who hear. Thank you for your faithfulness to us. Lord, I love you. And I thank you for your love for me. I love you. And we all can say this, Lord, we love you because you first loved us. Help us in this, these days that are ahead to trust you, Lord, to not hold on to fear or doubts when they try to come into our heart or our mind. Help us to quickly remember your promises. Remember your word. You will keep your promise. You will keep your word. You will not leave us. You will not forsake us. We are your children, and we can rest in that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen.